What is going on, investors? Hopefully, guys are doing well out there. It is Friday. The weekend is here, and so is the Fang Stock Recap Show, where every Friday we recap all the major news and the technical chart patterns from all the major Fang Stocks. Are we having a Fang Stock crash? We have multiple Fang Stocks down six, seven, eight, nine percent just over the last week. You're definitely going to want to stick around for the technical patterns. Those are holding true. We are on the eve of earnings. We've got Meta. We've got Google. We've got Microsoft. We've got Tesla reporting their earnings next week. Buckle up. We've got a lot to get through, and we better kick things off like we always do with Meta Platform. So the week at 515, Meta hitting that reverse button down over 6.6% to finish the week at 480.97. The company reports their earnings next week. Snapchat did surge, though, earlier in the week as a TikTok bill is on a potential fast track through Congress. They're going to jam this into another bill that is going to include potentially aid for Ukraine and Israel in order to get those passed. And this, I tell you what, that money is flying in Washington, D.C. There's going to be people on the TikTok side that is going to try to bribe those politicians to get this not put in that bill. And there's going to be people on the other side, Meta side, Snapchat side, Google side. That is going to be like, yeah, let's ban TikTok or force a sale or an IPO or something like that. Be very interesting if this moves across the finish line in Washington and they force a sale of TikTok. Obviously, then you've got legal challenges going forward after that. And we'll see what happens. Now, Apple was ordered to pull Meta's WhatsApp and threads from its China app store as you now have a tech cold war. It was already in place, okay? Started maybe a little bit with former President Trump. Under President Biden, it's accelerated, okay? You had the chip sanctions that we've talked about. Anytime we talk about NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, ASML, TSM, you basically have a whole embargo or just sanctions that are not allowing advanced chips to get into China. And now it's going to be a tit-for-tat thing on the software side or the social media side as Apple is ordered to withdraw or pull some popular apps, at least maybe here in the United States. I'm not sure as much in China, but... Boy, we're going to have a tit for tat over the next uh, year or so, and we'll see where it goes. Meta should provide users a free option without targeted ads. That's according to EU privacy body. Targeted ads are getting a really, really bad rap because all targeted ads do is, I mean, look, they do a number of things. And I, I understand that if you're a privacy body that, uh, you know, maybe targeted ads invade some aspect of privacy. But if you're a small business owner, And to be honest with you, the vast majority of people buying ads on these websites like Facebook are actually small business owners that are looking to target moms or financial professionals or students or whatever it is and meta allowing them to do that. If you take away the targeted ad option, it monopolizes advertising back to the PepsiCo's, the Coca-Cola's, the McDonald's, the big brands that can just afford to spend millions and millions of dollars without any kind of targeting or any type of retargeting capabilities. They just want to spray their brand message across the atmosphere. The advent of targeted ads has actually ushered in a lot of targeted and new brands and small businesses And I think that uh, people just misunderstand them. Now, Meta rose earlier in the week, but as we said, was down over 6% as they unveiled Llama 3, which is their new AI large language model. And it's hitting more platforms, AWS and others. And it looks like kind of a soft launch. It looks like maybe just initial launch. They're going to unleash new features and maybe additional model sizes in the future. Llama 2 was is one of the most popular open source models. And I'm sure Llama 3 will probably follow in its footsteps. Got to hand it to Meta. I, I don't know if this is the right strategy. There's certainly upsides and downsides to this strategy. But they're spending millions, millions and millions. As a shareholder, you might sit back and, and wonder what's going on. But uh, they're spending millions of dollars and then they release these models out to the public. So you got to handle hand it to Meta for that strategy. Moving on to Apple. Start of the week at 174, down over 5%. Ooh, a key technical level was broken. You want to check that out as Apple falling below 165 to finish the week at 164 and some change. Now, Apple loses its top smartphone maker crown to Samsung, as particularly in China, you're seeing an exodus from the Apple brand. Now, Huawei 
competitor to Apple, launched a new high-end phone in China, continuing to ramp up pressure there. As I think you're seeing the same thing with Tesla as it relates to electric vehicles. China just has that ability to launch their own brands. It's obviously their own country and their own market. And so uh, typically the home country and the home market can serve the population better. Obviously in the country of China, there's government stuff as well that gives Huawei an advantage. Now, Apple is going to maybe look elsewhere as it boosts its investments in Vietnam. And this goes along with kind of our a cold war or if you will, tech cold war, if you will, against the United States and China. So it's going on the software side. It's going on the hardware side with the semiconductors. It's also going on in the manufacturing as Apple continues to try to diversify itself out of China. And I, I tell you what, it's getting priced into the stock. If you have some type of reversal here, these stocks would rally pretty hard, probably in a short period of time. But right now, doesn't look like to be the case. Now, Apple is only making more products in Indonesia. And again, this is probably good from a sustainability standpoint from a supply chain, but it's probably not going to be any cheaper. It's going to cost the company R&D. It's not cheap. Get Tim Cook fly all over the country as well. I tell you what, this is going to show up in the balance sheet. It's going to show up in the operating statement and we'll see how Apple reacts and responds going forward. According to analysts, Apple might wait until September to reveal the most new AI features on the phone. I think it's because they don't have any new features. Now, some people are presuming that maybe Worldwide Developer Conference in a month or two is when you'll see some features, but it could be that the AI features Apple rolls out aren't really made for developers. It's more of an in-house thing and it's more something that Apple is developing on their own. They might also not want to tip off their features until the phone actually rolls out. Usually I think around September or so. I think it's really that Apple doesn't have anything yet. I think if they had something, you'd be able to see it since it's more likely software rather than hardware. I think they don't have anything and they might need until September to actually get it to work. Now, Taiwan Semiconductor dipped amid warning on chip market growth. We squeeze this in on the Apple news segment because TSM reported that smartphone shipments were down 16% and basically said the recovery in the smartphone market was almost non-existent at the current time. Senator Elizabeth Warren, always good for a good quote, says Apple and green texts are, quote, ruining relationships. So these, she said this on a social media site, which you might argue has ruined some things as well. I don't know. But she's saying that non-iPhone users are being excluded from group texts for, from sports team chats to birthday chats to vacation plan chats, and they're getting cut out. And she says, who is to blame here? Apple. So clearly, uh, Miss War Senator, Miss Senator Warren is is not happy about that. Moving on to Amazon start of the week at 187. For the first time in a while, this stock hit the reverse button, down nearly seven percent to finish the week at 174 and some change. Amazon though is expanding its smart grocery cart initiative to its third party retailers. This is a shopping cart that has a digital screen. It can point you around. I think you can scan items, maybe get access to coupons and those types of things. They call it the Dash Cart. It's available in some select whole food markets, but also maybe some Amazon Fresh stores, but similar to AWS and other things that Amazon has done, they don't keep the technology for themselves. So it's a little bit different strategy than you look at like Apple and other tech companies out there. Amazon rolls this out and then like AWS, they roll it out to anybody that really wants it. But if you're a Kroger, do you really want your data rolling through Amazon servers? Because this is really what it ultimately is about is these third party retailers will give some access, you you would think, to Amazon, and maybe they don't want to do that. Moving on to Netflix. Start of the week, it's 626, and no, this one down over 11% finish the week at 554. Now, yesterday we did an earnings video on Netflix. Check it out if you haven't. It'll be down in the video descriptions or down in the video feed for the channel. I tell you what, I went through these earnings and, and look, the stock does what it does. It has been on a monster rally. All these stocks, except for Tesla basically, have just been on them and Apple, I guess, have been on a monster rally year to date. This thing was up over 23% and now it's up only 14%, but that's still a huge gain in just four months. 
And I think it had a lot of it priced in because they were fantastic numbers put up by Netflix. And even the guidance really was decent. But you really saw things take a turn for the worse on the earnings call as executives said that their membership reporting is going to get cut. So you always get a little nervous. You get a little nervous when a company makes a change like this. I remember Apple, they used to announce the number of iPhone. They used to give you exact number of iPhones sold. And then they took that away and people got kind of nervous. Like, oh my God, uh, is this... This is the end of Apple. It's probably up 200% since then. Uh, so Netflix pulling away that I don't like when companies do this. I, I can understand maybe why they do it could be from a competitive perspective. It also means that subscriber counts could start to not look as good as they have over the past couple of quarters. But I think Netflix is going to be fine. Their ad tier looks like it's being adopted widely and uh, they're just beginning to scale that business up. Now, Disney, Warner Brothers will not likely make an NBA deal before the exclusive window, probably because those companies are not flushed with the amount of cash that is going to be required because the National Basketball Association wants to double the $24 billion it generated from its prior deal that it signed with Warner Brothers back in 2014. So they're looking for like close to $50 billion, which I tell you what, the NBA, uh, sorry, I used to watch two NBA games a night I can't even watch the NBA now. It's it, There's a reason why women's basketball is gaining in popularity. It, it's because it's way more watchable. The NBA game is just terrible. So I don't blame Disney and Warner Brothers for sitting this out. But guess who's going to step up to the plate? You're going to have Amazon, Apple, or Google, or one of these big, rich tech companies are going to wave, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 billion dollars in the NBA's face and probably land the rights because uh, that's what you do. Moving on to NVIDIA, start of the week at 892. And whoa, what, what happened? What happened? Down 10% today, 14% on the week. NVIDIA hitting that reverse button for really the first time in a while. Shares not only under 900, now under $800 per share. NVIDIA shares. Trading now at 762. You want to look at the technical pattern. We alerted you basically at the top of NVIDIA at the 52 week high at 970. We alerted you of the technical pattern. Just, just letting you know, just a little flex there for us here on the investor channel. Intel Foundry is fully dependent on its own design team. And that's a red flag. That's not according to me. That's according to to Bank of America. So what they're saying is Intel wants to build this foundry. And I don't think they're going to have these things up and running until probably 2030 at, at, at any type of volume production. That's more or less the sign that we're getting from Intel, at least maybe on the, the leading bleeding edge side of chips. Maybe some of the trailing edge stuff they get out a little sooner than that. But they don't have any big customers. If you're NVIDIA, are you, do you really want to work with Intel? Because remember, it's not just a foundry where you get the blueprint from NVIDIA and you just press a button and it stamps these things out. It's a partnership. The reason why TSM has such a, a dominant position in the foundry business is they developed close partnerships. And it's not just a partnership from NVIDIA comes, Jensen Wong comes over to TSM and delivers a design and then TSM takes the design and go makes the chip. The two companies actually collaborate together to design the chips. So if you're AMD, do you really want to go knock on the door of Intel and knock on the door and give them your designs and collaborate? Same thing with NVIDIA, same thing with Apple. Do you really want to go knock on the door of Intel who again is designing its own competing chips. That's why TSM's model works. This is why the foundry and design model works. That is why it's been separated in the semiconductor industry because there's simply just a level of trust there that these companies have to have in order to work with each other. I don't see AMD working with Intel. I, I don't actually see Apple working very well with Intel. I don't see Nvidia working very well with Intel. And so that doesn't leave them a lot of customers to run their foundry at scale because it's not profitable today and certainly at scale, it's got to have millions and millions of chips coming off the line uh, basically every week or maybe even every day. TSM is still the preferred partner. They're getting things done in Arizona. I don't think this is going to work for Intel. I think they're going to have to separate the two businesses and the two companies 
in order for it to work. That's not just according to me. Other analysts feel the same way. AMD unveils a new chip to power AI PCs. That's the new buzzword uh, these days. It's got these AI-powered PCs. It's a race against Intel and NVIDIA. I don't think it's really that big of a race. I, I don't think there's much in these chips that's that much different. If you're going to up, if you have a PC, you're going to upgrade and it's probably going to be an AI PC, but you're not going to really, really actively go out there and look for an AI PC. This is more or less a marketing term by the PC since demand is very sluggish, as TSM reported this week in PC, this is just a way to get more demand. Now, Intel, though, is planning to release a pair of AI chips in China this year. That's certainly the market where there could be some opportunity since there are the sanctions, but there are ways to get around them and potentially maybe Intel could drum up some sales in the country of China. Now, Taiwan Semiconductor dipped amid warning about the chip market growth, but the one thing it did say was that AI demand was very, very strong. So I think when NVIDIA reports their earnings, their last report, they report their earnings uh, basically a month from now. When they report, it might be at expectations, but I, I, I just don't see any, ex I don't see any way NVIDIA comes underneath expectations based on everything that we heard this week. Now, Samsung said to supply high bandwidth memory chips by the first half of this year. So that's pretty good. You got these high bandwidth memory 3E, which is basically the next generation of high bandwidth memory. If you don't know what high bandwidth memory is, it's essentially the memory that is being put on the die of these AI chips that are made by NVIDIA and others. And it, with each iteration, as you've gone from the A100 to the H100 to now, I think it's the GB200 is next, there's more and more of this memory. And right now, I, I believe SK Hynix is the leader in that. I think Micron's capturing some share as well. With Samsung coming online, that should be bullish for at least high bandwidth memory making it on to the devices. Now, Super Micro, you thought, Nvidia plunge super micro plunge 23% today as we are seeing an all out like literal correction like a one day correction in a stock like SMCI but you are seeing an all out correction in the semiconductor space if you don't have the stomach for it the semiconductor industry needless to say is pretty darn volatile moving on to Google start of the week at 157 this one avoided some of the downdraft down only. And I say only 2.35% as we are just, I think I'll, I'll say it during the technical segment. Uh, Google reports their earnings next week. Shares finished at 154. Now Google blocks California news as journalism law looms. We've reported on this on the past. I believe there was a similar bill that was passed in Canada. Another bill that was passed in Australia. It's passed by these lawmakers who think they have great ideas, but they typically don't. But this is some kind of journalism <laughs> preservation act in that Google should be paying these news sites. Just put out good news, guys. If you actually put out unbiased, actual real journalism, then people will click and support your stuff. But most journalism these days is really, really flimsy, just kind of clickbait stuff or it's opinion that doesn't really matter. Just put out good news and everything will solve itself. I'm full of opinions today. Google's public release of Gemini 1.5 should build some trust. That's according to Deutsche Bank, as obviously Gemini 1.0 was a massive failure, at least from a public response, as many users pointed out, biased as image responses. We've gone over it numerous times. I'm sure you've seen the social media posts and the news reporting on this. We'll see if Google's able to bounce back from this. I think they've got a great product. They've just, again, got to gotta tighten things up over there. Now, Google doing more layoffs and restructuring. Talked about this last week, and we'll talk about it when we get to Tesla as well. All these companies are finalizing their results. They're getting their 10 Qs. They're looking at the final numbers, and they're saying, well, how can we cut costs for next quarter and the subsequent quarters? And so this is right around those times. Right at the end of the quarter, you see these layoffs. Now, Google also facing some challenges in the UK as a regulator says changes to its cookies for ad privacies falls short as Google has been wrestling, trying to get rid of cookies, which is a way to track user behavior on a browser and serve you targeted ads and basically track what type of websites and create a profile of you, if you will. Google's been trying to dance around this 
for a while now. And I tell you what, if they have to go back to the drawing board, at least in the UK, that would be a problem. Moving on to Microsoft, start of the week at 425. Microsoft not immune to the downdraft as shares of the software giant down over 6% to finish the week under $400 for the first time in a little while. Shares ended at 399. A Microsoft-backed cybersecurity firm, Rubrik, plans to raise up over $700 million on an IPO. Now, what was interesting is the company had revenue at $627 million. I'm talking about Rubrik. Uh, Microsoft generates $620 million maybe in like in a day or an afternoon. But the cybersecurity firm generated $627 million. It's not too bad, right? They're only seeking, I say only, but they're seeking a $5.4 billion valuation on the IPO. And it looks $627 million on a price to sales basis. It's not overly egregious, but they saw a net loss of 354. So this is an unprofitable company. We'll see how the market digests that. It might even have already gone public, honestly. Microsoft's massive investment in open AI avoids an EU probe. Boy, that's a good thing for Microsoft. I tell you what, Microsoft can avoid these probes, whereas Amazon can't buy a one a, a, like a billion dollar vacuum cleaner and Walmart is getting tested as it relates to a, like a TV maker. Last time, I, I just bought a new TV. There's like a million TV brands and like an HD TV is like half the price of what it was like six or seven years ago. Uh, but I tell you what, Microsoft must be greasing the palms of those politicians because they they can buy the most dominant AI company. They basically steal the mo most uh, profitable and best AI company for a song and a dance and they avoid a probe. And and honestly, I think they should. Now, Google, Microsoft, open AI to introduce new features to boost AI spending. And this is what it's going to come down to. OK, you're going to have to get make your product better and then release new features with open AI. It's image stuff. It's video. It's all those types of things. New creativity. I liked Google's business model. So I liked Google's like good, better, best pricing structure instead of like open AI is like 20 bucks and that's it. I like kind of an entry middle and a best tier. And I think that's the T that's where most of these companies are going to go. There's going to be like a God tier, but then there's going to be lighter tiers where you just get a few of the features and that'll be playing out over the next uh, several years. Probably now moving on to Tesla start of the week at one sixty six ninety eight, and Oh, Elon Musk's company is falling apart, down nearly 12%. This is on the heels of multiple weeks in a row where we've been down 10% on this stock. Now we're down to 147.05. The valuation is now at under $478 billion. What is happening to Tesla? Well, they are responding, and you got to hand it to Elon Musk. He's not scared to lay people off. And look, that sucks if it's you. It sucks if it's a family member. In general, it sucks for people to lose their jobs. But we're looking at this from the investor channel angle, and we don't care. We just want our shares and our profits of our ownership to go up. And when things are struggling, you need to lay people off. And Tesla's quick to do that. They laid off more than 10% of its global workforce, including some employees in Buffalo and New York, which I think is where they manufacture maybe the charging units for the superchargers. Tesla is going to recall certain cyber trucks as well to fix a, a faulty accelerator pedal. And I believe they even stopped production on the cyber truck to fix some issues. I tell you what, I really want a cyber truck, but I don't want one of the early, early ones you always have. And it, this isn't just unique to Tesla, any early technology, you got to get the bugs out. I want one of the ones that are like, you know, after they kind of get through all of this now. Here, here, I know Elon Musk listens to the Fang Stock Recap Show. I have it on good authority that Elon tunes into the program, and he listens, guys. Elon Musk listens to the program because we talked about this, talked about this numerous times, that Tesla should slash the price of its full self-driving package because it was too expensive, and they did that. It was $199 per month, and they're actually giving free trials. I was using it in my uh, Tesla for several weeks now. It's going to move the full self-driving to $99 per month, which is far, far more reasonable. But I'm going to tell you right now, I have used the full self-driving feature. I'm a fan of Elon Musk. I'm a fan of Tesla. I, I'm a fan of the cars. I would never, ever, ever get in one of those cars, at least it's the software is today, and not be behind the wheel. It does not work. I had to slam on my brakes. I was going to run somebody over. It was blowing through stop signs. It swerves into other lanes. 
full self driving is cool, but it, it it doesn't work yet. And the Robo Taxi, I know the event is not until August. That this company is nowhere close to a Robo Taxi unless you're on perfectly paved streets. Now I'm on streets that suck out here in California. Okay, so mind you that. But if you got perfectly paved roads. All the lines and the stop signs are perfectly placed. No one's run them over or tagged on them or whatever. Well, maybe it works. But where I live, absolutely not. I would not put myself or anyone I love in a Tesla in the back seat on robo taxi mode. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. They have a lot of work to do, to be honest with you. Now, moving over to the technical segment of the show, I've got to do a little, you know, we've got to get the charts up here. Now, uh, we've had a rollover in the S&P 500. We talked about this. We were well over and extended. We talked about it. So you should be prepared for this. Don't be alarmed. You should not be panicking. These red candles were going to show up. And they've this technical pattern that we're in. I mean, this is the, I mean, we can take this little green box off here. We can take this red line off here. Just to, just to clear things up, guys, that's the technical pattern we're in. We touch, we go to the top. We come back down, we go to the top. This red line is really the line in the sand. Looks like to me with the S&P 500, we're coming back here. This is where if you're in an index fund or those types of things, this is when I allocate a little bit more. We come back down here to like 4,800. I mean, we're only 100 points away on the S&P 500. We might hit this next week. That's where I start. I get more aggressive as we come back in. It, it, we hit the bottom here. This is like a back the truck up moment. And look, if you're wrong, if it's like, oh, World War III breaks out or whatever, recession hits, great financial crisis, and you donk out the bottom here, well, Okay, it happens, but more than likely, this technical pattern will likely hold, find some footing down here. It will be ugly, though, as you make this move on the S&P 500. This is why we have to convince ourselves as investors now. It's going to be very ugly. Recession, great financial crisis, all the bank failures, all this stuff is going to come into play as we make this move down. Uh, just So just keep that in mind. Now, moving on to Meta. Now, Meta reports their earnings just in five days. We're sitting on a bed of support. The stock hasn't broken technically its technical pattern quite yet. If it does continue to move down, we again, we've had 394. This is why you're always patient on these stocks. Don't have FOMO. That's what the amateurs do. That's what the amateurs have. Just be patient. This isn't the newest Michael Jordan shoe sneaker drop or the new uh, Louis Vuitton handbag that you got to have or Rolex released some new watches recently. You don't got to have it the day they announce it. We can wait. We can be patient. This gap fills on Meta. I think you start looking at this one pretty closely south of 420. Now, speaking of breaking, oh, no, this purple line was kind of a line in the sand. And even if you put it all the way down here, yeah, we broke through this and that wasn't good. Now, Apple could save this thing. They report their earnings in about 13 days. But uh, this micro trend where you're making some steep lower highs, lower lows is still intact. And it looks like to me, we heading for the green box, folks. And the green box for Apple, I think that's where you're stepping in. Moving on to Amazon. Oh, we, re we retraced all the way back to the brown line. This is probably the most actionable stock. Now, complicating the situation is Amazon reports their earnings in 11 days. I probably wouldn't step in front of a freight train. And I certainly wouldn't step in st front of a stock like this until they report earnings in 11 days. But technically, this could be your opportunity. And if you continue to move lower with Amazon, there's actually a beautiful area down here. Now, I don't think we get all the way down there, but we've got this kind of double area. It probably will materialize at like 150. 150 on Amazon looking real good. Now, Netflix broke trend. We're going to be back testing to the top of the previous trend. I think we get in this box. I think you're looking for south of 500 on Netflix, south of 500 with their financials. I haven't owned, I might've owned Netflix in the past. It's not a stock I, I like buy and hold. I, I, I'm i like in it and you sell it or whatever. Uh, and maybe that's not the right strategy because the stock's done, done great in the long term. But um, yeah, I'm thinking about buying this one, honestly. Uh, NVIDIA, oh my goodness, we rolled over and we put a big red candle. We told you back here, back in March, you can go back and look at the timestamps on the video. If I had a video editor, we would be putting this on YouTube shorts and just pumping our chest, but we're not going to do that. Uh, this trend is intact with NVIDIA. You should have this, if you're in NVIDIA and, you, and you're just not in it for the long haul, you want to take profits, you know, this thing probably became a huge percentage of your portfolio. So you probably should have rebalanced a little bit. Um, 
you know, this was the time to sell. This was the time to take a little bit of profits. I had, I mean, you should have seen the comments when I said, Hey, this is the time to, and I did this back in March. I said, Hey, this is the time to sell NVIDIA. I was up at nine something and, and oh my God, I got roasted and destroyed in the comments. That's usually a good sign that, that that's probably going to materialize as a good time to sell. Ever since then, it's been a perpetual drop down lower. And now it's kind of look out below with the entire chip sector, but NVIDIA in particular. First area I'm excited about is 582. That sounded crazy uh, a little while ago. Now it seems more realistic. And again, you're 33 days away from NVIDIA, but you're going to hear from AMD and Intel. And I don't think either one is going to be good because you got PC demand that sucks and neither company is is blowing the doors off of AI. I think both companies struggle based on what we saw with TSM and the PC business. Google's looking okay. If we pull back into this trend, again, Google reports their earnings in six days. Pull back to trend anywhere south of 140 is good for me with Google. Microsoft, haven't seen this in a while. Big rollover in shares over the past week. We are now sitting kind of meta-like on an area of support. Will we break lower? Will we break higher? We'll find out in six days. Microsoft breaks lower. There are numerous areas, 368, 342. Dream scenario, you get back into the 310s, 315, 316. Dream scenarios might be setting up. Guys, don't go buy that Louis bag or that new Rolex. I would save it because you might have some dream scenarios coming up. Now, speaking of dream scenarios, uh, it's not confirmed yet because this is an ugly, ugly downtrend for Tesla. I mean, it is just ugly. And even just the last four year chart is pretty ugly. But we are finally I leave these green boxes on here. I know I deleted. I think apples are one of them, but I leave them on here for a reason. You get in the green box. That is your time to go. And with, I know I said fundamentally with Tesla, it's a tough story, but when you're in these green boxes, the fundamental story is tough. It's hard to buy stocks when they're in this downtrend, when they're in this moment as a company with Tesla, I don't really see something that'll you shape like V shape. Now I could be proven wrong in four days when this company reports their earnings, but the delivery numbers are already known. We know it's a struggling quarter. Elon Musk is going to get on there and try to pump this up as best as he can. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. I think you're going to have chances to accumulate this one probably in the 120s, maybe back down at 100. That's certainly going to be your time to go. Now, that was the Fang Stock Recap Show for Friday, April 19th. We're just one day away from April 20th. If you celebrate, enjoy the weekend. We'll be back again a week from now after a huge week here on the channel of earnings. Until then, good luck with your investments.